Since 2012, I have been producing videos covering SpaceX's plans for manned Mars missions and seeing how accurate my predictions and educated guesses turned out to be. In my previous video, I theorized that Elon Musk's proposed Mars Colonial Transporter would be a Dragon equivalent to the Big Gemini or the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, with the added bonus of being able to make propulsive landings onto the surface of Mars and off again. This seems like the next logical step after making propulsive landings with spent rocket stages, a goal SpaceX has spent years trying to accomplish. Well now, we have some great news. For the first time in history, the spent rocket stage of a launch vehicle has reignited and made a propulsive landing back to the launch pad from where it came. And with it, we are one step closer to rocket reusability, we are one step closer to space becoming accessible to the average citizen, and we are one step closer to propulsive landings onto the red planet. Except there is just one catch. It was not SpaceX who pulled this off. Like something out of the old Soviet Union days of space exploration, the rival private company Blue Origin took the world by complete surprise when on November 23rd, 2015, they secretly launched their new Shepard into a suborbital trajectory and made a successful touchdown back to the launch site. Second still engine restart. 12,000 feet. 5,000 feet, engine starting. We have thrust. 1,000 feet. LGS deploy, 50 feet, 7 feet per second. Touchdown, engine stop. This past year, SpaceX has so far made four propulsive landing tests onto a floating barge with their Falcon 9 rocket. On their first attempt last January, following the successful launch of Cars 5, the rocket ran out of hydraulic fluid and came crashing down onto the ship. Their second attempt was to follow the successful launch of the Discover in February. But the ocean's surface conditions were too rough and a water landing was attempted instead. The third attempt was the launch of Cars 6 in April. It made a perfect touchdown, but then toppled over. Finally, their latest attempt was on the Cars 7 mission in June. But for the first time ever, the Falcon 9 exploded during liftoff. The return to flight mission is scheduled for December. Elon Musk responded to Blue Origin's historic landing on his Twitter account. Congrats to Jeff Bezo and the Blue Origin team for achieving vertical takeoff and landing on their booster. Do you lose as gracefully as you win? I wouldn't know. I've never lost. These repeated failures by SpaceX and Blue Origin suddenly pulling a Soviet Union on them has caused some to speculate that SpaceX has fallen behind. But what they fail to realize is that SpaceX's goals are far more ambitious than what Blue Origin is trying to accomplish. As I said before, the propulsive landing by Blue Origin was a total surprise to the world because it effectively happened behind closed doors. But for me personally, the reason why it took me by surprise was because I honestly haven't been paying that much attention to them. Companies like Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and x seem to be more interested in suborbital spaceflight. Quick little hops into space without achieving orbit. Say for example, shooting a capsule or space plane from Europe to Australia in as little as 1.5 hours. In the short term, this would be beneficial to tourists and thrill seekers. And in the long term, this could replace international airliners. But ultimately, it has no bearing on deep space exploration or colonization of the Moon or Mars. To be fair, Sir Richard Branson went on the record to say that he would like to build a Virgin Galactic base on the Moon for tourists. To be sending people to space and to be the only company in the world sending people to space, um, 
I, I suspect will propel Virgin up to, you know, being one of the best known brands in the world, if, if not maybe one day the best known brand in the world. And then hopefully one day, you know, to, to build a Virgin Hotel in space and maybe, you know, have a, a, a Virgin Hotel on the moon, which would, which would be um, spectacular and something which, which we would like to aspire to. That statement was made 10 years ago, but as best as I can tell, that is for now his wishful thinking. Even the more hardcore private companies, such as Boeing and Sierra Nevada Corporation, seem to be more interested in long-duration Earth orbit space station missions. Other than Bigelow Aerospace, who manufacture inflatable space station modules with potential moon base applications, SpaceX is the only private group I've seen with serious devotion to achieving manned conquest of the solar system. So needless to say, having spent so much attention on SpaceX, it was quite a shock to see them upstaged by a group with relatively simpler ambitions. Elon Musk himself further commented on Blue Origin's achievement by tweeting, quote, It is, however, important to clear up the difference between space and orbit. As illustration of such, he provided a link to this website that so nicely and graphically demonstrates what needs to be accomplished. Getting in space is easy. The hard part is getting an object into a high enough speed to keep oneself in orbit. A rocket sending something into space would be travelling much faster than a rocket sending a payload into suborbit, and thus a propulsive landing by an orbital mission launcher is a lot more challenging. Although some have counter-argued that SpaceX's Falcon 9 performs a deceleration burn in space before attempting to re-enter the atmosphere. Whereas the new Shepard did not reignite its engines until it was near 1.5 kilometers above the ground, meaning it was coming down much faster than Falcon 9. But I am not here to get into a petty back and forth, my rocket is better than yours argument. It is my belief that in the long term, the successful landing of the new Shepard rocket will be beneficial to both Blue Origin and SpaceX. If his track record is any indication, with each mistake, Elon Musk learns something from it. Remember the old Falcon 1 days? Three out of the five launches consecutively failed, but each failure got better than the last before Musk finally achieved orbit. Likewise, he learned from the failures of the past Falcon 9 touchdowns, and each attempt got a little better. Just as he learned from his own failures, I am sure that Musk will learn from the success of his rivals and ultimately implement it in his own strategy and technology.